Hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Udo Zendai Dukai and in this video I introduce you to my extended preset that I use to test my mix from time to time while mixing. Then let's get started. So I want to introduce you to my um, Aurotone tool 2. I already um, published another video some time ago with the old Aurotone tool. And this with this tool, I test my mix um, sometimes when mixing in between because um, I want to know um, how it sounds on a smartphone or in the car or in the kitchen radio or on a mono Bluetooth box or somewhere else in on some crazy exotic devices. You never know what, what's happening. And you all, you all know the, the problem when you're testing or when you're creating and mixing um, your tracks. You go out in, in, in the car, switch it on and think, oh my God, what have, what have I done? So, and uh, this tool helps me a little bit to um, get rid of, of the most disasters um, there are. So you get a clue what's happening um, with your mix. And just go through this tool if I run now this let me run this loop if i run this loop there is my old oratone tool and this tool just removes the um, bass frequencies and the high frequencies so like on a smartphone speaker or something if i switch it on oh wait i switch it on wait this happens and currently this track is playing on minus 15 decibel and I want to know something about how loud I can um, dial in the volume so because I want to work later or right now on the loudness so I can just use this volume knob maybe to put it on this so I'm close to uh, close to 0 dB if I put now the aura tone on, this happens on a smartphone. Now I can switch mono on as well. And with this AB button, I always can switch between everything of these effects off and on. So I can combine every of those um, additional devices, like for example the mid-side low cut, where I cut um, at a specific frequency the lows out of the sides. So I put that on for example. Or for example add a saturator to it. And with the saturator, this is always like it's getting louder, so you have to dial back it a little bit. Um, therefore, the, the A-B test for loudness is not <laughs> that accurate, but you get a clue what's happening. Especially when you listen to the mid and higher mids. Then there's as well a, um, a high chorus, so I add in the higher frequency a chorus to get a little bit more stereo. If you if you mix this a little bit to mono or just test what is happening if I add st more stereo in the highs to the to the mix. About that. Or maybe add another compression. Or turn everything on. So, so you get a good impression what is happening on different device devices. And uh, another cool thing is that you can use this volume knob um, to check 
your mix. So normally you you you're mixing at a, a specific um, volume, uh, maybe not too loud. I hope not too loud. And um, to test if, uh, for example, um, if everything is in volume, like uh, the whole gain staging of the different tracks. You can uh, turn down the volume to just listen to your track very quietly so that you can hardly hear what is happening and um, you should you should really turn that down until you you have really difficulties to 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 listen to it and then pull it a little bit up and if you then still uh, recognize that this is your <laughs> track you you're done you're you're created then everything is fine. If they are, for example, uh, if you hear lots of hi-hats like tss, 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 like this, you know, okay, my hi-hats are too loud or anything else that just jumps out of the mix in, in this at this volume, if you put it really, really quiet, for example, like this, and you hear, I don't know, the, the vocals far too loud and nothing else more, if there are other instruments, you should hear some other instruments as well. If it's just a cappella, it's okay, <laughs> then you should hear the vocals. But um, everything should be still in, in balance. And the same you can do if you just move that up to very loud um, range or very li loud position. And therefore you could check if the, if the, um, the bus is far too loud, so it just bumps out your, your ears or something. Um, so this volume control is really nice to check the mix as well. So inside of this or this tool is just a chain device. And in this chain device, as I told you, there's a mid side split where, where I have a, a low cut in the sides. And then there is a saturator with a light saturation, a little bit saturation. Then this is the Oratone tool with the low cut and the high cut as specific um, frequencies. Then there is a multiband with the chorus. So just to add some um, chorus or stereo whiteness in the highs, so, um, then you can listen what it does to your mix. And then there's the tool device that um, where you can switch it to mono. So, and another nice thing of this tool or maybe let it open is that this is um, remote controls so you can promote you can control that with your uh, midi controller so i need to do like this <laughs> so now i can switch everything on and off and something everything with my controller and this is a really nice feature and another another nice feature <laughs> Another nice feature is that I um, added another page to the remote controls where you, if you need that, where you can um, change, for example, the Oratone low cut and high cut. This was this one. Then you can change the side cut from the mid side tool. If you want to have a lower cut in the sides, like for an I don't know, 100 hertz or 90 hertz or higher, like 150 hertz, 160 hertz. Then um, there is the button for the saturation drive knob that you can drive some more saturation if you need that. Um, sometimes it's uh, really nice if it's if it's not uh, clipping or something that you just can test a little bit uh, what it's doing with your mids when it's saturating the lows. And then there are some, as well as some, um, the, every, every comp compressor parameters from this compressor. So you can find adjust the compressor as well. The markup gain from the compressor is always activated because if there is a compressor in a, in a device, I, the most times there is a markup gain as well so that you don't lose a loudness because every, every device wants to be as loud as it can. So that's the whole device. Um, I always loaded it up in my, um, in my global track. I always use a global track like here before I send it to the uh, two bus track to output it or print it or bounce it or export it. 
and um, I have it in my template already inserted but uh, deactivated like here because everything I put in there um, if the preset or the device is deactivated doesn't use CPU power so if you don't use it in your track right now or a long time not in your track it's just deactivated and doesn't steal any CPU power from from your project and if you need it you can just switch it on and use it with the AB knob and so on. So that's it again. My name is Odo Sendai Thank you for your time and attention and I hope to see you soon again in the next video. Stay healthy, save the future, take care. See you then. Ciao, ciao.